Learning from CERN CERN's Large Hadron Collider, or LHC, is the largest, most complex, and most expensive machine ever built on this planet. Over 10,000 scientists and engineers from over 100 countries collaborated on its design and construction. The purpose of the machine is essentially to study the interrelation between the physics of the very small, quantum mechanics, and the physics of gravitation, general rel relativity. The LHC consists of two rings, one large and one small. The smaller ring is called the superproton synchrotron, or SPS, which is used as the final injector of the high-intensity proton beams just prior to particle collision. Here is how the LHC looks along the border of France and Switzerland near Geneva. Goro Adachi discovered in 2008 that the ring sizes correlates with the sizes of Earth and Moon. My Earth-Moon diagram below shows these bodies in their correct proportions. I drew two intersecting lines through the center of the Moon for reasons that will soon become clear. Inspired by the many fascinating correlations Goro Adachi just blogged about, the LHC, I drew the following map of our inner solar system. Note, planets have elliptical orbits. The sun is not located at the center of all the ellipses, but in one of the two foci of each ellipse. This makes the top view rather complex and particular. Adachi kindly sent me data from Starry Night Pro, which I verified by drawing each elliptical orbit in AutoCAD. I had to locate each orbit's focus at the center of the sun and orient each orbit's perihelion. I rotated the entire solar system so that the Earth's perihelion, which is the point in the orbit closest to the sun, was at the bottom or 6 o'clock position. Then I took the line work from the Earth-Moon diagram shown above and colored it red, and placed the point of tangency of the two circles on the Earth's perihelion. I scaled the red diagram to fit Venus's orbit. Adachi noticed that the intersection point of the crossing lines representing the center of the Moon in the Earth-Moon diagram appears to be on Venus's orbit. Next, I copied the Earth-Moon diagram again, and this time colored it yellow. I placed the bottom of the Earth-Moon diagram on the 6 o'clock position and scaled it down to Venus's orbit. I noticed that the top of the smaller yellow moon circle appears to be tangent to Mercury's orbit. Once more, I copied the Earth-Moon diagram and this time colored it green. It didn't work in the 6 o'clock position, so I rotated the diagram 180 degrees to the 12 o'clock position, placed the top of the diagram on Mars's orbit, and scaled it to fit the orbit of the red planet. The center of the moon circle is on Earth's orbit. Adachi discovered this happens precisely Mars's perihelion. The three correlations in red, yellow, and green read like a cosmic blueprint. I conclude that the Earth and Moon's proportions strongly correlate with the orbits of our neighboring planets, implying masterful design. The Earth-Moon proportion is very interesting in itself. It is a mystery I have written about before in this blog and in quantification. Here is an image showing additional correlation. Were the builders of CERN members of a vast international conspiracy to encode the proportions of the Earth and Moon into their instrument? How did they keep that a secret? Why would they do such an unlikely thing? Encoding such macrocosmic harmony would be especially improbable for those who study the smallest microcosms. Did aliens build the Moon so that it would fit into the cosmic harmony? If so, they must have also placed Mercury, Venus, and Mars just as they are to create these harmonious correlations. How far must the conspiracy go before you start to question your belief in conspiracy? Why personify actors when none might exist? Let us now consider another possibility exemplified in mound-building termite ants. 
These ants construct vast complexes that are sometimes constructed over millennia. They intentionally seed, grow, and harvest fungus inside, employ complex air conditioning systems that keep the internal temperature constant, build residences, nurseries, manage and transport water within the structure, build structural reinforcements, conduct building maintenance and repair, widely tunnel into the surrounding ecosystem affecting its fertility in positive ways, and are constructed with a great degree of awareness and specialization. All of this implies intelligence far exceeding in the, any individual ant brain. Read this fascinating National Geographic article to learn more. Who is the termite architect? With what material mind does this architect think? Are his or her neurons the individual ant brains? If so, how would this architect physically communicate with millions of workers and constantly let them know what to do? Logically, there cannot be any such material ant mind. Explaining the ant conundrum leads us unavoidably to non material possibilities. Is there an ant supermind coordinating the colony's activities over a long time across countless ant generations? Is there an ant mind controlling the entire species? If the mind isn't physical, then we won't be able to weigh and measure it and make it falsifiable. Perhaps there are subtle electromagnetic traces we have yet to discover. Perhaps the ants communicate with a fungal mind. The Nat Geo article suggested as much. Quote, Collectively, the colony's fungus accounts for nearly 85% of the total metabolism inside the mound, and Turner speculates that the fungus may send chemical signals to the termites that influence control the way that they build them out. I like to tell people that this may not be a termite-built structure, he says. It may actually be a fungus-built structure, end quote. If so, fungus is a form of intelligent life. Terence McKenna certainly thought so. Next up, consider, is there a human supermind coordinating the actions of 10,000 scientists and engineers at CERN? Is that God? If so, that would certainly be ironic. Could the human supermind be the Internet? Remember, the Internet was invented at CERN. I see the Internet as a technological biomimicry of the human species supermind. How does Gaia consistently maintain myriad conditions for life on the knife edge, including whatever we humans have done quite recently to throw that balance off? Quote, I think much good will come from recovering a sense of the life of the heavens. We are coming to see the Earth, Gaia, as alive. I think we also have to take seriously the idea that the sun is alive and conscious. If one wants a scientific rationale for this, it comes ready to hand through the discoveries of modern solar physics. We now know that the sun has a complex system of magnetic fields, reversing its polarity every 11 years associate, associated with the sunspot cycle. With this underlying rhythm of magnetic polar reversals are a whole series of resonant and harmonic patterns of magnetic and electromagnetic change, global patterns over the surface of the sun of a fractal nature, patterns within patterns, highly turbulent, chaotic, sensitive, varied, and complex. As electromagnetic patterns within our brain seem to be the interface between the mind and the nervous system, here we have parallel in the physical behavior of the sun. It is perfectly possible that the sun has a mind which interfaces with the solar system itself as an organism. This is largely what astrology has concerned itself with. End quote. Rupert Sheldrake. Is there a solar supermind coordinating the sizes and orbits of its planets to maximize harmony? The neuronal structures within our brains, unplanned roads, and the large-scale structure of the universe simulated on the Max Planck supercomputer all exhibit the same specific branching filamentous pattern. Come to think of it, so do fungal maps and the maps of the entire internet. What these disparate phenomena have in common is that they are all information processing networks. Is there a universal supermind processing all of its information, holographically passing data 
to smaller network processing structures all the way down? Is your brain really the place where consciousness happens, or do we have it all backwards? What if your brain is just a dumb physical receiving set that tunes into a channel of the human supermind, like the way a radio tunes into the music, or like the individual termites seem to do? Is there a hierarchy of minds and superminds all the way up? If so, then the awareness running through all possible minds, gross and subtle, is the same awareness coordinating your human life. It is who you are. You are not only your limited human body nor your local human mind. You are vast. You are the architect, the patterner. You are the conspiracy. That is the deeper lesson of CERN.